Good morning. This video is all about electrons. So last week we talked about what an atom is, right? We looked at the fact that we have protons and neutrons that are found in the center or the nucleus of an atom and protons have a positive charge, neutrons don't have any charge, and then floating around out here along the outside of the nucleus are these electrons. And electrons, remember, have a negative charge. So in a neutrally charged atom, we know that the number of electrons is going to be equal to the number of protons because we're going to have protons that are positive, negative electrons, and we want them to balance out so that the, the atom has a neutral charge. So that's all what we talked about last week. This week, we're going to really focus on these guys right here, right? So last week when we talked about protons, we talked about the idea that the number of protons is what makes an element an element, right? Hydrogen has one proton. Helium has two protons. You can't be helium if you have three protons or one proton, right? So the number of protons is what gives an element or an atom its characteristics. But these electrons are what are going, is going to be what is involved in chemical reactions. So they're very important as well. So let's just look at lithium here to kind of review. We call this picture a Bo the Bohr's model of an atom. So, and basically what that means is that it's showing the nucleus with the protons and the, neutri the neutrons. So lithium has three protons. It's got four neutrons located in the nucleus. And then there are three electrons that are floating around the outside of the nucleus. And in the Bohr's model, we show this as being in circles. For a really long time, scientists did believe that these electrons orbited around the nucleus just like the planets orbit around the sun. However, we know now that that's not the case. We actually don't ever know the exact location of an electron. What we do know is the general area where it can be found within the atom. So we're looking at the probability that the electron will be found in a very specific place. So we're kind of going to compare this to like living in a city, living on a block, living in a house, and then, you know, you could be anywhere in that house. We just know that you're in the house. And that's kind of how electrons are too. Electrons can be, they're going to be in a given area we don't necessarily know exactly, specifically pinpoint where that area is, but we know that it's within a given area. So when we talk about where electrons are, always kind of keep that in the back of your mind that we're talking about them existing kind of in an area. So electrons are arranged in energy levels or shells around the nucleus. And we will look at these shells as being circular, but again, we know that they are actually different shapes, something that you would get into in a much more advanced class. But so electrons are located in shells or they are arranged in shells around the nucleus. So here is a shell. Each one of these circles is a shell. Now, the electrons in the outermost circles have higher energy levels than the ones in the inner circles. And that's because, remember, po opposites attract, right? So we got all these positives in here. So the farther away that these are, the harder it is to, it requires more effort to pull the electron a greater distance from where these positives are, right? Because they want to be attracted. So these outer shells are going to have more energy than the inner shell. So this shell right here that's closest to the nucleus, it has the lowest amount of energy. And as you go into shells that are farther away from the nucleus, you're going to have more energy because it takes more energy to keep that electron away from the positives where it's attracted to. We call each of these shells or we give them a number. So this is shell one, this is shell two, this is shell three, there's a fourth shell, one we won't be dealing with much in this course, but so, and we call this the quantum number and we give it an, a letter like a lowercase n. So n equals one, that would be the first shell, n equals two, that would be the second shell, n equals three, that would be the third shell. These are kind of like, I want to kind of compare these to like cities, right? So here's a city, here's a city, here's a city. Places where these electrons can kind of reside. Each one of these shells 
can only hold a specific number of electrons, okay? So n equals one, the first shell. That can hold a maximum of two electrons. It can't hold three. It can hold one, so like in hydrogen when there's only one electron, that would be one electron in this first shell. But it can hold a max of two. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight mm. electrons. The third shell can hold a maximum of 18 electrons. And the fourth shell, which isn't written in here, can hold a maximum of 32 electrons. Okay, so there's a maximum amount of, of electrons that each one of these energy levels can actually hold. Electrons will fill the lowest energy shell first, and then they'll go and start filling up the next energy shell. And if they fill up the next energy shell, then the electrons will go into the next energy shell. So for instance, let's look at carbon here, right? Carbon has six protons, so we know that it's going to have six electrons because it's, it's neutral, right? So we know that this first shell holds two electrons, right? Maximum of two. So two of its six electrons are going to be in this energy level, in this shell. But we still have four more electrons, right? Because it's got six. So now the electrons are going to go into the next shell. And that next shell, remember, can hold up to eight electrons, but we only have four left, so they'll all just reside within this shell. So the energy levels will, the, the electrons will fill up each shell first, and then the remaining electrons will start filling up the next shell. So if an energy shell is kind of like the city where the electron lives, then we also have like the block that it exists on, or like sub-levels of energy, okay? So each energy level can further be divided into sub-levels, and these sub-levels are labeled S, P, D, and F, okay? The first energy level has an S sub-level only. The second energy level has an S and a P energy level. The third level has an S, a P, and a D energy level, and the fourth energy level has an S, a P, a D, and an F energy level. And so what you should see is, is that the quantum number, so n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, that also corresponds to how many sublevels exist in the atom. So again, if the energy level is the city, then the sublevels would kind of be like the blocks, right? So the first city has one block. The second city or energy level has two blocks. The third one has three blocks. The fourth one has four blocks. Okay, so it's just a subdivision of each of those energy levels. So now within each of those sublevels are orbitals. And this is kind of like the final location where the electron resides. It's like the house on the block in the city, right? Okay, so an S sublevel has one orbital. A P sublevel has three, a D has five, an F sublevel has seven. And each one of these orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so let's try and draw this out a little bit to maybe make it a little bit more visually clear. So let's say that here's our nucleus, here's some protons that are in here, right? And we'll add some neutrons that are in here. So here's kind of the nucleus of our atom. And then we have these energy levels or these shells that are located around it. Oops, let's do it in black, okay? There's the first energy shell with the lowest amount of energy. Here's the second energy shell. Kind of drawing this, remember this is Bohr's model. Okay, there's the third energy shell, right? So we got, this is N equals one. This is n equals 2, this is n equals 3, this is a quantum number, remember, n equals 4. All right, and we know that these electrons are floating around here. So again, when we kind of made my comparison, this is sort of like, you know, the city. So let's just say that we're going to take this, we're going to take this section right here, okay, and we're kind of going to blow it up, right, make it a little bit bigger so that we can see what's happening here. So let's start with N is 1, the first shell. So this would be this one right over here, okay? We know that this has one sublevel, and that sublevel was an S level, right? We know that this, N equals 2, 
has two sublevels. We know the third has three sublevels, and we know the fourth has four sublevels. So remember, first level sublevel is the S level. So S, all of these are going to have an S level. The N only N equals one, the first energy level only has the S level, but we know that there's a P in the second one. Okay, so we know there's a P in the third and there's a P in the fourth. And then we know the third sublevel is a D, which is found in the quantum level third, and we know the last one is an F. Now, remember, what we're going to do is we're going to add orbitals, and we're going to make, we'll make our orbitals blue here, okay? So we know that the S sublevels only has one orbital, so we'll just draw it as a circle. Okay. S orbitals only have one, and we know that P has three orbitals, right? So there would be three orbitals in here. And we know that the D has five orbitals. So one, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we know that the F has seven. And then finally, we know that every single one of these orbitals holds two electrons. Okay, so we'll put two electrons in here, two electrons in here, two electrons in here, and so on and so forth. So n equals 1, this is like the city, right? The s sublevel then is like the block within the city that the electron lives, and then the orbital is like the house on that block. And somewhere within that house is going to be where those electrons live. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. Now, we use all of this information to basically make an address for a electron. Okay, and we call this address. So the address would kind of be like, put it in quotation marks here, an address for an electron is called its electron configuration, and we write it out. So like, you know, I live at 202 Main Street or whatever. So we can write out address or an electron configuration for these particular, for any particular element or atom. So let's take fluorine for example, okay? So fluorine is gonna have an atomic, average atomic mass of 18.9, and it's got nine protons. So if we were to draw a fluorine, we'd have, we know we got nine protons, all right? And we know that there are 10, 19 minus nine, 10 neutrons. So we can draw those in here. Now we'll draw our electron shell. But, okay, so we know that there's two electrons in this shell, correct? We need nine electrons though. So we have two in this particular shell. You know that the next shell, so we have seven more that need to be filled in, right? And the next shell holds a maximum of eight, so we know that all seven are going to be in this shell. So we'll just kind of write it in. If we were going to write the address out for this, this is what this would look like, right? We know that there is two electrons in the first level. So this would be one, okay, because this is going to be the N number here. We know that there is an S sublevel, and we know that there are two electrons in that sublevel. One, two. We also have electrons left over, so we're going into the second energy level, which is two. We know that there is an S level with two electrons, so now we're up to four electrons. And then we still have five electrons left, so we got to go to the next sublevel, which is P, and that would be five electrons in that particular orbital, or sublevel, sorry. So again, here is the N number, here is the sublevels, and then this is the number of electrons in the sublevel. And if you then count all of these up, you should end up, this should equal the total number of electrons. So this whole thing is like the address. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And that's also called the electron configuration. The last thing that we just want to talk about in regards to electrons is this idea of valence electrons. 
Valence electrons are the electrons that are found in the outermost shell of an atom. And these are really important because these are the electrons that are going to be participating in chemical reactions. Elements will either pick up electrons, they will give up electrons, or they will share electrons with another element, but the electrons that are participating in this give or take or sharing are the valence electrons. So valence electrons are going to be, like I said, those electrons found in the outermost shell. An atom wants to have a full outer shell. It makes them stable. So this video is everything you needed to know about electrons. And obviously, as we move forward and we start looking at exactly how chemical reactions work, we're going to be focused on those electrons and what they're doing and how they're behaving between two different elements or three different elements or four different elements. If you have questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask. The next lecture video is really going to go through what we can learn, not only about electrons, but protons and neutrons and characteristics of any of the elements just by their location on the periodic table. Have a great day.